The Sculptfun S30 is a diode-based laser engraver available in a 5 watt, 10 watt, or 20 watt configuration. The 5 watt is the standard or base S30, 10 watt is the Pro, and the 20 watt is the Pro Max. Feature-wise, the machines are identical with a defining difference being power output. The S30 line has a work area of 400 by 410 millimeters and comes standard with limit switches, which will allow you to fully take advantage of Lightburn's different start from modes and advanced features like print and cut. The S30 also includes a linear rail for the X-axis, air assist that can be controlled through Lightburn, and the ability to swap out the lens for maintenance. The air assist will help to achieve much cleaner, quicker cuts. In this video, we will go through the process of getting the Sculptfun S30 up and running in Lightburn. We will cover the process for both Windows and Mac OS, including configuring the air assist and enabling the limit switches. Timestamps are available below so that you can jump around as needed. The first thing we need to do is install the driver for the Sculptfun S30. The S30 uses the common CH340 driver available in our documentation under connection issues and is linked in the description below. On the driver download page, scroll down to the section labeled for Windows and click on the Windows CH340 driver link to download the driver. Once downloaded, go to the location you save the file to. The file is in a compressed .zip format and will need to be extracted. Right click the file and extract all. Once complete, double click to run the driver installer. In the installer window, click install to install the driver. When it completes, you'll get a pop-up saying that the driver is successfully installed, or if like me you had it installed already, it will say driver successfully pre-installed in advance. We can now close out of the window and move on to the next step. Next, plug the power cable into the S30 and connect the included USB cable from the laser to your computer before powering on the machine. You will know the laser is powered on by the LEDs on top of the laser module and spinning fan. We are now ready to download and install Lightburn. To do this, head to lightburnsoftware.com, which will also be linked in the description. In the navigation bar on top of the homepage, click on the download slash trial link. Then scroll down until you see the four different versions of Lightburn. For Windows, there is a 32-bit and a 64-bit version. Most modern computers will be 64-bit, and Windows 11 only comes in a 64-bit version. If you want to confirm your Windows install, you can click on the Start menu and type System Information. In the System Information app, there is a row labeled System Type that will let you know whether you're running a 64- or 32-bit version of Windows. In my case, we can see that it says X64 based PC. With that info, we will click on the Windows 64-bit version of Lightburn to download the installer. Save the installer, and once the download completes, click on it to open the installer window. The on-screen prompts will guide you through the installation process. Once you get to the final window of the installer, you will see a few different options for additional drivers. These are specifically for larger DSP machines or Galvo lasers and can be ignored for the S30. Click Finish to complete the install and launch Lightburn. The first time you boot up Lightburn, you will see a window asking for a license key that will also give you the option to start your trial. If you have a license, you will need to enter it here, and if not, click Start Trial to begin your 30-day trial. Next, you will see the device list. I have a few devices already listed, but if you've not used Lightburn before, yours will be blank. Click on the Find My Laser button. This will open a window that will scan your computer to detect the S30. Click on Next to begin scanning. If the S30 is not found, make sure you installed the CH340 driver that your machine is powered on and plugged in with USB. If it is still not found, try a different USB cable and port on your computer. What we should see when we click Next is our laser listed. For the S30, we can see that it found a GRBL machine with a work area of 400 by 410 millimeters that is a G-code type connected over USB. Next, click Add Device. We want to name our laser something easy to remember. For simplicity, I will name it Sculptfun S30. For the work area, these values were read off of the laser's controller and we will leave them as is. The origin for the S30 is the front left, so we do not need to change anything, and since the machine comes with limit switches, we will enable auto home laser on startup. The final page is just a summary, and we will click finish to create the device. 
We can now see the S30 listed in our device list. If you have multiple devices, selecting a device from the list and choosing Make Default will automatically launch Lightburn with that device selected. You can see the current default device by the little asterisk. Click OK to close out of the window, and if we look to the right in the laser window, we can see the Sculptfun S30 is selected and the device status shows ready. In the console, you may see an error for the homing cycle. At this point, you can jump to the section on enabling air assist and limit switches. The process for this is the same on both Mac and Windows. The first thing we need to do is install the driver for the Sculptfun S30. The S30 uses the common CH340 driver available in our documentation under connection issues and is linked in the description below. On the driver download page, scroll to the section labeled Macintosh and click on the link labeled V1.5 CH340 under direct download link to download the driver. Once downloaded, click on the file to open the driver install package. This will open a window that will guide you through the install process. This is a fairly small install, and once complete, you will see installation was successful. The final step for installing the driver is to click Restart to reboot your Mac. Next, plug the power cable into the S30 and connect the included USB cable from the laser to your computer before powering on the machine. You will know the laser is powered on by the LEDs on top of the laser module and the spinning fan. We are now ready to download and install Lightburn. To do this, head to lightburnsoftware.com which will also be linked in the description. In the navigation bar on top of the homepage, click on the download slash trial link. Then scroll down until you see the four different versions of Lightburn. Clicking on the Mac OS version will download the disk image file needed to install Lightburn. Once downloaded, click to open the file. In the finder window, simply drag the Lightburn icon into the applications folder to install it. Next, head down to Launchpad and open Lightburn. The first time you click to open Lightburn, you will get a pop-up warning and will need to click Open. In Lightburn, you will see a window asking for a license key that will also give you the option to start your trial. If you have a license, you will need to enter it here, and if not, click to start trial to begin your 30-day trial. Next, you will see the device list. I have a few devices already listed, but if you've not used Lightburn before, yours will be blank. Clicking on the Find My Laser button will open a window that will scan your computer to detect the S30. Click on Next to begin scanning. If the S30 is not found, make sure you installed the CH340 driver that your machine is powered on and plugged in with USB. If it's still not found, try a different USB cable and port on your computer. What we should see when we click Next is our laser listed. For the S30, we can see that it found a GRBL machine with a work area of 400 by 410 millimeters that is a G-code type connected over USB. Next, click Add Device. We want to name our laser something easy to remember. For simplicity, I will name it Sculptfun S30. For the work area, these values were read off of the laser's controller and we will leave them as is. The origin for the S30 is the front left, so we do not need to change anything. And since the machine comes with limit switches, we will enable auto home laser on startup. The final page is a summary and we will click finish to create the device. We can now see the S30 listed in our device list. If you have multiple devices, selecting a device from the list and choosing make default will automatically launch Lightburn with that device selected. You can easily see the current default device by the little asterisk. Click OK to close out of the window, and if we look to the right in the laser window, we can see that the Sculptfun S30 is selected. On Mac, the first time you create the device, it will show the status as disconnected. A quick restart of Lightburn will allow the laser to connect and the status will change to ready. In the next section, we will cover enabling air assist and limit switches. The process for this is the same on both Mac and Windows. For Air Assist, the Sculptfun S30 uses the M8 command to turn Air Assist on and off. This should be the default value in Lightburn, but we can easily confirm this by opening Device Settings, which is the wrench icon in the top toolbar. In the Device Settings window, under Air Assist, there is an option for M7 or M8. If M8 is selected, it is correct, and if M7 is selected, you will need to change this to M8. Click OK to apply and close out of the device window. Now you can enable air in the cuts and layers window to turn air assist on for that layer. To enable limit switches and homing, the S30 needs to be powered on and connected to Lightburn. Clicking on edit in the top toolbar, 
Select Machine Settings to open the Machine Settings dialog window. In the table, we need to enable both the $21 hard limits and the $22 homing cycle. To enable, click on the red toggles to the right of the values to turn them to green and true. Then click right to update the values on the laser's controller. This will be a fairly quick process and the text below the table will read controller settings written successfully when completed. Click OK to close out of the window. Now, when you go to the move menu and click home, the laser will home to the front left and you will also be able to use the absolute coordinate start from mode. Your Sculptfun S30 is now fully set up and configured in Lightburn and ready to run your first job. We have a great beginner project available in our documentation that will be linked in the description. We will also be releasing a project video using the S30 to create a QR code Wi-Fi coaster in the coming weeks, so stay tuned for that. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to not miss any new videos, and check out our existing tutorial playlist for additional guides on mastering Lightburn.